Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I've finally been able to compile a list of your questions and I'm going to answer them to the best of my ability. Hopefully this video isn't super long, but I'm hoping I can get to most of your questions. So we'll go ahead and dive right in. First question I had was asking about treatment options for neurogenic TOS. From most of the points that my doctor had mentioned to me, um, you, it's not necessary for you to have surgery with neurogenic TOS. Usually it can be treated with physical therapy. And so you have like this kind of triangle of nerves, like this nerve bundle that's in here. Um, and it's whenever that gets tangled up or tightened or compressed, that's what's causing like that numbness and tingling down your arm. So if you are able to do uh, physical therapy exercises like opening up this area, stretching it out, uh, creating more space within that triangle of, of or bundle of nerves, you could technically could relieve it. So I would say that I've done PT. That was another one of the questions is how many rounds of PT would you do before you consider having surgery? There wasn't a, a defined amount. I would say at least two rounds of PT, independent rounds of PT. So you have, you have a set of PT, you finish, you continue to do home exercises. If it doesn't improve, do another round of PT a couple months later, finish that, do, and then do your home exercises. If you don't get any relief, then you can consider going further. For me, I did three rounds of PT before I considered getting further help or evaluation. I first went to my regular doctor and then they did x-rays of my shoulder. They thought there was like a bony island or something that kind of needed to be shaved off. So they sent me to an orthopedic doctor. And at that point they were saying that according to an MRI that I had some herniated discs in uh, cervical that where I would either need a discectomy or spinal fusion. And that was basically, they said that was the option. I could either do this or I could get steroid injections, which may not even work. I was skeptical of that. And that was just such severe or like major sur surgery off the bat that I waited. And uh, that's when I got referred to a physiatrist and I started doing rounds of PT and that one failed. I got after, you know, finishing that, I went back again did another round of PT, that didn't help. Then I was referred to like a hand specialist, like orthopedic hand surgeon that evaluated it. And that's when we really started discussing possibility that there could be thoracic outlet syndrome. I went back to my physiatrist, they did an EMG, and then they did realize that there was a decrease in conduction. So I had it on my left arm. They noticed there was a decrease in conduction across the elbow. So then at that point, I got referred to a neurosurgeon and they said, you know, maybe it's just, we just need to do a transposition surgery. And then with that, we, they went in, they noticed there was a considerable amount of scar tissue. They tried to clean it up as best they can. They did transpose the nerve. So they just basically from being here, like when you're, when you bend your elbow, it would constrict it. They just kind of move it over to the side so that whenever you do the bending of the elbow, it doesn't constrict. I had that surgery in November of 2018 and I was actually good for about six to eight weeks. And then I started having the pain come back again and it was even worse. And I was getting nauseous every time I got, had pain. And I know that was one of the questions that people asked, like, what were the kind of symptoms that you had? So I had numbness, tingling in my hands. So it, but I had it primarily like pinky ring finger, but then I had also had it in the half of my middle finger. And then occasionally it would be my whole hand. So typically you have like, you know, your ulnar nerve and your medial nerve. If it's ulnar nerve, typically it's only your pinky and your ring finger. I was already having issues on the middle finger. So we knew that there was something else involved. So then, went through, uh, through the hand specialist. That's when I, after that, that's the point when I got referred to the hand specialist. And then we did the EMG at that point again, which, uh, it still showed 
it showed that the decrease in conduction was fixed, but I was still having those symptoms. And then at that point, my physiatrist wasn't really sure what to do. And thoracic outlet syndrome was a suspicion, but it was a very, very far suspicion. They said there were very few people who have it. They had been practicing in the area for 20 plus years and they never had a case of it. So it was particularly uncommon. And that's how I got referred to the Mayo Clinic. They said, you know what, Mayo Clinic deals with all of the weird cases kind of stuff, unusual kind of cases, you may want to do that. So when I went to, when it came to looking for which facility to go to, I know there was somebody that was considering going to Johns Hopkins. Um, there was another person that's going to Baylor College of Medicine. Um, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those facilities at all. Um, I did not consider them as part of my search looking for treatment for thoracic outlet syndrome. Uh, from the opinion of my doctor, it was just uncommon enough that we figured we would just go to Mayo Clinic because they specialize in uncommon things. So I went to the web Mayo Clinic website. I looked and they were part of the vascular department. And then they, when I typed in thoracic outlet syndrome to see if that was a condition that they treated, indeed it was, they actually have a clinic dedicated to it. So then I set up the appointment. Timeline wise, I initiated with Mayo Clinic probably in October of 2019. And I had my appointments scheduled in December. So I was there from between December 2nd and 6th. So it was a five day, um, I had for that first initial visit with Mayo, you have to be there for five days so they can do all these diagnostic tests. That was another one of the questions that you came up, like what kind of things did they talk about um, on the initial visit and that since Mayo does five days worth of tests, like what kind of tests are they doing? Like I was a little bit intimidated about that as well. So I, I actually have my schedule pulled up from 2019. So I'll actually go in order. So Monday, I started off the day at 7 a.m., uh, actually 6.50 in the morning, going to get blood work done. And then I had a general imaging exam, which I believe was x-rays, different x-rays that they did. Uh, later on in the morning, around 8.15, I did an ultrasound vascular exam. And uh, about an hour after that, they did thoracic outlet testing. So the vascu ultrasound vascular exam is they're taking an ultrasound wand and they are checking all the way throughout here and in the area what the blood flow is. And so, and then they'll have you do certain maneuvers or movements that say, move your arm back like this, kind of like you're gonna throw a football, that kind of thing. And then they will measure what that blood flow is. So they're looking to see, is there, um, is there artery uh, blood flow stopping? Is there the vein blood flow stopping? So that way they can see, if, you know, is there arterial or venous TOS? And then the thoracic outlet testing, it, they had some kind of, conductor of um, energy or electricity. I know that sounds kind of weird, but um, they would have me do certain maneuvers like um, bending my arms or pulling my hands above my head and that kind of thing. And then they would measure the conduction similar to like an EMG or a nerve conduction test, but without the needles. If you never had an EMG nerve conduction study those can be painful. So this was a non-invasive way to still be able to check the, the conduction of, of, you know, how the nerves were working. And then they did it independently. So they did the left side and they tested the right side. Um, funny enough, it was showing that they were uh, issues or deficits on both sides, but I only had was experiencing symptoms on my left side. So that's the reason why we focused on my left arm when we were there at Mayo. Still on Monday, maybe around 12, 30, one o'clock in the afternoon, I had my initial evaluation with the main PA that was actually in charge of the thoracic outlet uh, clinic. And they were asking me a lot of history, like when did this start? Like 
What was the origin of your symptoms? How did it progress? What have you done for treatment? Um, the surgeries, how did you fare after that? And where are you now? How big of an impact is this making on your life? That kind of thing. And uh, just basically kind of laid out the whole history on the table. And they did a little bit of physical exam as well. On Tuesday, um, back on December 3rd, then I had an MRI of the brachial plexus. So brachial plexus is all right here, like in this area. So they're checking all the nerves and stuff like that in the chest. So it's not a cervical neck x-ray. It's not thoracic or it's not a chest x-ray. I mean, it's checking all of that area, like that kind of goes along from the neck all the way to the arm. They're looking at all of that to see if there were any blockages. Then I did have an EMG, which is an electromyogram. That's um, where they put the needles and they, um, well, they're checking to see the conductivity um, across different parts. And usually they measure out like on your arm um, and they have someone who is specially trained to do those. From what I've heard from my physiatrist, EMGs are very, they can be very subjective. So you have to have someone who's very well trained in doing them and has a lot of experience so they can kind of tell like the nuances about how you do. And then Tuesday afternoon, I actually had a four hour, I believe it was four hour, uh, pain management group session. So that's basically group therapy for people dealing with chronic pain. And so anybody that's that comes to the TOS clinic is required to go through that. And it was actually very informative. I am not uh, against the therapy, but it gave you like a lot of good tips of when you're someone dealing with chronic pain, there are so many factors um, that could be aggravating. So even emotional stress can make your chronic pain worse, uh, lack of sleep, um, poor diet, all that kind of things. And then they gave you good coping techniques or um, ways to be able to handle chronic pain. So that way you're not sending like negative feedback to your body that, for instance, if I'm in pain, I cancel all my plans and I don't go anywhere. That is kind of giving negative reinforcement to the body that whenever you have pain, you have to shut down. So it's like good things like teaching you coping techniques. If you're still dealing with chronic pain, how to handle it. On Wednesday, then I did a consultation with an orthopedic doctor, just so, you know, we're making sure that we're not missing any structural abnormalities with the bone. Um, I also, from that, we decided that we were going to do like a trial, I think, considering like a steroid shot or, of, of some sort. Um, and we tried that to see if that would help. And they said, typically you should have had some type of relief within 24 hours, you know, to kind of see. Then on Thursday, I had an MRI of the cervical spine and that's to check to see if there was any herniated discs or any, you know, nerve issues along there. Um, another thing that we had, that came out of the orthopedic doctor session was considering to do a trial nerve block. So basically they would go into like the, like in the nerve, like where that scalene muscle is here and inject it with lidocaine. It's very temporary, maybe last like four hours, but they're saying that is somewhat of a diagnostic test to see if you have TOS, because if that, if there's issues around the scalenes or there's compression happening there and then you numb the pain, you technically could be able to do whatever. And it ended up that test worked really, really well. I was able to go back to my hotel room and do push-ups, and I hadn't been able to do that in over a year. So uh, of course it wore off, but it definitely helped with the pain, like all the pain was gone with that temporary nerve block with the lidocaine. I also did a consultation with a vascular surgeon on Thursday afternoon to determine, to see if I was a good candidate for surgery and the what my surgeon had actually said was normally we try not to operate with TOS but with neuro, neurogenic TOS but if you're at a point where your symptoms are causing 
such an impact on your way of life that you cannot tolerate it's you're basically non-functioning like I, I was like a pretty much functioning functionally disabled like I was able to get some things done but I was missing a lot of my activities of daily living couldn't wash a dish I couldn't cook I couldn't sweep I couldn't mop I had trouble doing laundry had trouble getting dressed like it was affecting my life so much where surgery was considered an option so we seriously considered at that point um, doing surgery um, they did some other ultrasounds on the extremity and then on the Friday I also did a physical therapy consultation with someone at Mayo they were trying to evaluate whether you know were there any joint issues like are my joints old or stiff that kind of thing uh, what kind of exercises was I doing were they in line with what to with the TOS kind of exercises and we concluded that yes I had done everything that I needed to I could potentially go for another round of therapy but you know we're not really sure what was going to happen with that and then finally on Friday afternoon I did like a follow-up visit with the same PA that's over the whole TOS clinic so we could summarize everything that happened and then we could decide where to go from there. I know that was been that's a lot of information that I just threw at you. I'm going to go ahead and stop the QA Q&A video right here. Let me know if you have any other comments or clarifying questions um, regarding this video. And then I will post a part two in just a bit. Thanks, guys.